Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're bringing back Nathaniel Okenwa, the original Chatterbox Coder. How you doing, man? I am good. You said the original. Now the I'm wondering, original. is there like another flavor of Chatterbox Coder? Like Chatterbox Often Coder imitated, Light? never duplicated. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm super excited to have you back on the show. I'm I uh, it's always a blast when you're around. So uh, I'm also really excited today because we're doing something that I think is both very exciting and also such a good opportunity for trolling. Um, oh, Himena, thank you for the sub. Thank you so much. Himena just hit a year of sub, twelve months of subscriptions. Holy crap! <laughs> Kenny, I still Jimmy. can't believe I've even been doing this show for a year. It's been like Dang, you've been you're you're becoming like I don't want to say your legacy because that has some like legacy is not always a good thing, but you're becoming, <laughs> you're, like, you're you're aging like a fine wine. Why thank oh, you. I should have said aging. I meant like the stream is aging. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Gosh, I Daniel, personally I am digging. Oh. I am I'm aging like bread, but the, the stream, <laughs> it's it's going great. It's you know, it's like a, a nice sherry cask bourbon um yes people are <laughs> shouting out Mjolnir in the corner yes go Mjolnir. uh yes 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 um but yeah so i i feel like what we're doing today is something that uh that we all deal with when we call somewhere right you you call in and then you get told like you know press one for for account information press two for customer service uh, uh para espanol o primo uh, nueve you know like you know you get like the whole the whole experience um and that is called an ivr which i just learned today is short for interactive voice response you yes. know what's crazy is the number and I don't, i'm just gonna tell people i forgot and had to google it a couple <laughs> seconds ago like do you ever have those things where you know what the acronym is you just forget what it stands for <laughs> that's like my <laughs> that's whole life time. <laughs> there's so many things that i'm just like i would just like spout off acronyms and jargon and i'm like oh, please don't ask me to define that I, i've literally forgotten um <laughs> nikki uh okay yeah so so i'm i'm really excited about this one but but before we talk about that let's talk about you so um you've been on the show before but for for folks who are meeting you for the first time you want to give us a little bit of a background Cool. My name is Nathaniel Kenwa, aka Chatterbox Coder, because I love to talk and I write code. Uh, so I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio, which we'll be talking about later. And my job is to pretty much go to wherever developers are. So before the panoramic, I'm calling it the panoramic deliberately, uh, it was in person at conferences, at events. Now it's been online on Twitch uh, and other sort of um, online places. I'm looking forward to going back to meeting people in person as well. But I've been having a lot of fun. I've started streaming i've joined the streamers club um, so i stream usually on fridays around midday bst um, and i build cool stuff and eat donuts so if you like donuts cool stuff and someone acting silly then you can come watch and come join us we do all sorts of javascript projects this is it, it, it's such a good idea it's one that i i am absolutely very tempted to steal uh so so tell me how the how the donuts work because i love this format so at the start of every stream, I basically write milestones. So I'll be like, okay, I want to build like, all right, last week I built a thing where you phone, if you're talking on the phone, you can talk to someone and it translates, but like, I'll be speaking in English, but they'll be hearing like Spanish. Um, and if they speak Spanish, it comes back to me in English. Right. So at the start, I kind of break the problem down into like the step that I think I need to do and I try to work through those and then if I get through enough of them by the end of the stream I ask the audience and there's always someone who says yes like which is good like luckily people in the chat they love me so I get to have a donut a special donut each week it just changes every week I'm usually very but excited have you have you ever not gotten your donut like does somebody ever say like no nah, no donut for you you got to throw it in the trash there you know what? Also, there's a Diamond <laughs> Boy. I'm not man. sure if he's around, but Diamond you Boy is always, always trying to stop me from getting my donut. So, but I've been able to find people in the chat who will just always support me. And and worst case scenario, and I've said this before, worst case scenario, we all know that I can just turn the stream off and eat it by myself. <laughs> anyway, so. But at that point, it's more of like a shame donut. Like you got to eat it in the dark by yourself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I I know I didn't earn this, but I need it. I need it. 
Um, no, that's that's great. And and also thank you everybody for the bits. Thank you, Eco. Eco is at 18 Ooh. months of subscription. Holy bucket. Uh, I am Thank you, Eco. I can't I man, I can't believe that y'all have been hanging out with me for that long. It is absolutely wonderful. It warms my heart. Um so Nathaniel, today we're gonna work on an IVR, which uh, cool. which we just learned both of us that it stands for interactive voice response. And when we talk about an interactive voice response, uh, I feel like there there are a few varieties, right? There's the classic one. You you press one to go to a different department, and and it kind of it it becomes it turns phones into a choose your own adventure game. Um, but that's right. not the only way you can do it, right? Like you can also there's the one that you have to talk to, and there's the ones that like look stuff up and you know, like I know when I call uh, like my credit card company, it uses my phone number to figure out if it recognizes my account and then it kind of gives me some basic details and if I put in my pin or whatever, it'll let me check my, so it like kind of jumps through some hoops and stuff. This is all stuff exactly. you can build with Twilio, right? Yeah, so Twilio, what, what Twilio started with, it started, and, and lots of times when I talk to people and I go, have you heard of Twilio? They're like, oh yeah, that SMS company. I'm like, yes, but we do so much more. <laughs> um, it's basically, we had all these building blocks that allowed you to sort of interact with phone calls and do stuff. But then people began to build really, really complex sort of applications that got hard to build. And then we focused not just on building those building blocks, but also building tools that help people make those complex applications mm. and abstract all of the, the sameness hard things that you have to deal with when you're right. building ivrs yeah i mean it's a it's and it's kind of a daunting problem to think about because you're you're dealing with like so phones are cool because phones are are it's like technology that's pretty old um but we do things that it's not really meant to do like the thing that I always found interesting about it is that what you're doing when you do like the press one for for whatever is you're not like it's not like you're pushing the button and the other end is is like receiving that button press. You're pushing one and it's making a tone, a, a tone. And the yeah. other end is like basically listening for the right pitch and making a choice based on the pitch it hears, which is wild. That's why you can't use rotary phones anymore, right? They don't make uh, they don't make touch tones like the, the tone isn't there. Um, so it's it's fascinating. And and so what what you're doing with Twilio is abstracting that part away because there's no like, you know, on the web, you've got click events, you've got kind of universal things, but you don't have a, a push one event on a phone. You got to like identify the pitch of the one button and then make a decision based off of that exactly right so it takes all of the information and the thing about like phones is even though like we're in the age of the internet everyone's got smartphones and stuff still like smartphones are not as widespread as phones mm -hmm. and like, phones are everywhere and f for sort of telecoms like technology is so widespread so like for example any company it makes sense to be able to build your sort of customer experiences in ways that have this massive like users uh, amount of users on it um, and then being able to still port that over to smart fancy stuff maybe with ai mm. with with all sorts of things and being able to just like create cool stuff I, that's that's where i go to it yeah it's really fun it's it's really good stuff so today what uh what did you have in mind for today like how how far do we want to push this so how are we going to earn our donuts thing. How are we going to earn our donuts? I mean, <laughs> see, now you've got me going down the donut train. So there's a couple of things. So we, when we usually call these, like, um, these phone lines, there's a goal. There's something we're trying mm -hmm. to get to. And then you have to kind of jump all of these hoops, give it the right information mm -hmm. so that you can get to wherever your goal is. I feel like the goal should be a type of donut, right? Mm. Maybe we create an AVR that takes you down a phone tree and figures out the right donut for you. Because there's so many Ooh. different flavors, so many different things. But imagine like you could phone this number and it will tell you what the right donut for you is. Absolutely. Like, I already you know this. Let's take this to the VCs. I feel like this is we can get investment for this. I like, take my money. Absolutely. <laughs> donutmatch.com like <laughs> um oh yeah playing playing sound effects from the stream based on a uh we that would be a, okay that. so that's a fun follow-up i think because i don't know how we would do that just yet but once once nathaniel teaches me how ivr works then i could extend that and make it so that you could call a number and like affect the stream which would be oh, really absolutely. cool 
Oh, I've taken phone calls on my streams. I've connected my, oh. my phone to Twitch. So like sometimes I let people call in and talk. It's 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 fun. <laughs> I love it. Dinder. Tinder for donuts. That's what we're pitching, everybody. I love it. I absolutely I love it. Okay. So uh oh. so <laughs> So this is this. that yeah I'm I'm so on board let's build dinder. Uh okay. <laughs> so So first and foremost let's uh let's take a second let's get over to pair programming view and uh make sure that you go and check out the homepage of learnwithjason.dev where you have uh live captioning going on right now. We've got Jordan with us today writing down everything we say which uh is bad for hey, Jordan, Jordan great for you. <laughs> you are awesome. I'm sorry that I talk so fast and talk too much. <laughs> Yes, uh, and that is made possible by our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura all kicking in to make this show more accessible to awesome. more people. Thank you very much. Uh, and so make sure you go check that out. Uh, and while you're doing that, checking things out, clicking things on the internet, make sure that you go ahead and head over to Twitter and follow Nathaniel. If I can do this right yes. on the first try, I can spell. Go follow Nathaniel. It is a, uh, a it's a Twitter stream full of, of information and pictures of donuts. It's a it's really wonderful. Um, <laughs> Wait, can we? Is my last picture of if you go to like media? I'm trying to remember what my last donut picture was. Let's see. What's, where's the donut? Uh, if we Streaming down, so cable like, management. Yes, so One more. I feel Show like, me. What? You, oh, there we go. There there's we go. The donut. There's a donut. There's a donut. What? <laughs> I, I think if you scroll down under like thread, I think I may have posted it. I'm not sure if I did. Cookie donut. Yes. It oh. was a cookie cookie dough. No, cookie dough donut. So it was donut that had cookie dough in it. Oh. If you click on like Maisie's like what flavor question, I think I posted a link to Like oh. for part two. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and, and there's a there's a song called The Donut Day. And we're gonna celebrate. Yeah, this is hilarious. I love it. I love this. Okay. We're just gonna drop this. Here you go, chat. Go go play with that. Um and while uh while you're while you're watching that video, we're gonna get ourselves set up to run here. So I have um Twilio, but let's head over to the Twilio homepage. How about that? So let's take a look. Uh Twilio itself does a bunch of things. You, you, as you said, I think a lot of people think about Twilio as a company that specializes in SMS, um, but it does so much more than that. I just realized I don't have sound routed to the right direction, so I'm going to change that. Make sure that uh, we can all hear things. Um, so this is like Twilio is a company that does phones, but it does a ton. Um, so we won't get through everything, but do you want to give us some highlights, some of the few things that, that y'all do? Well, so honestly, it's just like communication. So SMS, and, and that means a lot of things. So that could be just like a notification, like your delivery is on the way, but it could mm -hmm. also be two-factor authentication. We have the Authenticator app with Authy. Mm. We have video chats. We have uh, sort of WhatsApp API that's getting pretty popular as well. Uh, but then there's a lot of stuff that goes in the background to help those things. So we have like Sync, which helps you manage state because you need to do that for chats. Mm -hmm. um, we have like sort of, now, now it's like everything is jumping out of my head we have task router which is like a fancy way of being able to take tasks and assign them to the right people because you do that in contact centers so there's like all sorts of core technology layered on top of each other yeah and and there we've done a couple episodes on this um see if i can find you this is this is how good my site search is is i have to just do a find and replace like i'm sorry everybody <laughs> no worries i will fix this someday um but so yeah so check this out so we've got like video uh video streaming and we've got a uh this was a polling game or not even a game it was just polling that at, i swear to god one of these days i'm going to finish and actually work into the stream so that we can do live polls um but you know there's it, this just goes into some of the things we get into like twilio serverless functions their video chat functionality we look at the the sync service that you just talked about we we use that um so if you want to see more of what twilio can do make sure you go watch these episodes they are a lot of fun Today, though, we're going to be working with the, the OG Twilio use case, which is telephony. Yep, yep, yep. Back to basics, back to basics. <laughs> so so this is where, like, one of the first things we always say is that Twilio is like you buy your phone and you kind of like can do whatever you want with it. 
Mm-hmm. And this is kind of where we're going down. So there's a couple of things we want to do. We want to, first of all, be able to gather information from a person. So a person phones in, obviously. We want to be able to take a phone call. We want to be able to sort of uh, gather information about them and take them down a certain path. And then we can give them something at the end. Maybe we want to connect them to someone else. Um, we could do all sorts of things. Yeah, so we'll let's let's them. do this. I'm going to start writing down notes here and we will, uh, let's let's plan. Uh, which will be a first, maybe, for Learn with Jason <laughs> to actually start <laughs> with a plan. Um, so what we want to do here is we're going to build Dinder. Uh, remind me who came up with that idea. I want to make sure you get credit because it's so good. Uh, uh, Mazadeeb. Mazadeeb. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly maybe completely wrong excellent okay so what we want to do here is uh first and foremost we need to be able to um like we need a phone number yeah and then you said we need to to get information so what what are we looking for in terms of information do you think so we're probably going to like ask them some questions about maybe the flavors or things that they like. So for example, which is better like jam or custard custard, mm. ah, jam. Yes. Kind of thing. Uh, so maybe we can sort of take them down that route and find out what their favorite filling is and what their favorite topping is. So maybe we can ask for their fit favorite filling and their favorite topping. And then we create this magical donut for them. I'm like just going like on Krispy Kreme and checking if they have an API because that would be fun <laughs> to build with. I doubt they do, but that would just be perfect. If Krispy Kreme has an API, oh. donuts API. Wait, there's a donuts API. Yes, what is it? it returns donuts. Donut types. It scrapes Krispy Kreme's website to get donut info. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. So the following donut, the following APIs are available after you run NPM run build. Um, okay. So this is really fun. Let's, let's see what happens if I get this. I'm going to, so I'm going to grab. Oh my gosh. This I'm going to add donut. this onto my stream. Like, <laughs> uh, well, how do I not? Let's see. I'm going to put this. Just going to make a, a new directory. I have this uh, this habit that I picked up from uh, from Chris Biscardi where I uh, I create a GitHub like structure on my computer that matches the actual GitHub paths, and then that nice. lets me um, do this this shortcut here where I'm able to uh, make a direct link out of my terminal, so I can go straight to the repo if I need to. Cool. Uh, so what do I do to start? I need to npm run build. So let's um, it's got a package JSON. So let's npm install. And then, okay. So while we let that happen, let's keep thinking about what we're going to do. So we'll we'll be able to use this donut API as our uh, as our service here. Um, and then we're also going to be able to. Uh, so we'll ask about flavors. We'll ask about toppings. And then at the end, theoretically speaking, we should be able to like narrow these down. Yep. To show what's left. This might be a little more clever than we want it to be. So we, we could also do uh, a little more guided. Um, and at the end, recommended donut. Cool. Okay. That, that seems like it would work. Should we do yep. something like text them the recommendation yep we can do that because i won't be surprised because krispy kreme has a website so i won't be surprised if there's there may be urls um to the flavor of the donut that would be amazing okay so now we're gonna npm run build this is probably gonna take a while since it's scraping i would assume Mm. um yeah that makes sense i also just realized i'm like executing completely un unvetted code on my local machine like Oh, here we go. Krispy Kreme donuts. 
one of 48. Oh, wait, that's one of 48 of... Oh, Reese's so this will, this will take a minute. Um, yeah. That's okay. We did, probably wait, did we get wanna... the TM in the... Fascinating. How'd they get that in the URL? I guess you can use non, uh, non-letter non characters in there. Let's see. Makes Is there sense. like a conversation to be had to, <laughs> as to what constitutes a donut? <laughs> oh, Alright, Jacob Boulder. I, all right, I don't know if you actually have seen me talking about the cube rule of feed. <laughs> we actually addressed this on our last stream literally on the last stream oh my days according to the cube rule of food it depends is it a ring donut or is it a um a donut with a filling in it because if it's a donut with a filling in it i'm just scrolling down it is a calzone all right because it starts with a filling inside if it's a donut as a ring then it is a sushi it is a ring with some gap in the middle what about a donut hole? A donut hole. Oh, see, it's a toast. It's a toast. It's a toast. Because there's <laughs> nothing in it. It's just one piece of starch. It's a toast. Uh, I love it. See, I would argue that all of them are sandwiches because calzones <laughs> and sushi are just variations on sandwiches. Mm, yeah, I, I get that. I, I, I get that. That is an <laughs> argument I will allow. I, I subscribe to the uh, to what I would consider the the lunch special philosophy of of sandwiches. Everything is either Ooh. a soup, salad, or sandwich. That's that's really how it goes. Salad or sandwich. That is small. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Keeping it simple. Uh, <laughs> see, that would make most blue star donuts into cakes. I yeah, you're probably not wrong. What's um, a blue star donut? So Blue Star is a uh, it's a donut shop in Portland, Oregon that uh, ah. they specialize in like a very hipster donut. So like their their, their classic is a an horchata glazed donut um, and then they do, you know, like fancy stuff like that. Pizza is an open face sandwich. Absolutely. Uh, yep. But uh, but yeah, the, there's that. And then there's also voodoo donuts in Portland, which which specializes in uh weird donuts about voodoo donuts so here's I, the like, thing it's genuinely on my map voodoo is a good it's a good donut shop but really what's cool about voodoo is the novelty of it because they do donuts that are not safe for work they do donuts that are like <laughs> a voodoo doll that's uh that's full of red jam so that when you and it like they stab it with a pretzel stick so that it looks like it's you know a voodoo doll that's bleeding um so that part's all really fun the donuts themselves, though, they're they're, they're okay. Like they're good. Oh, oh, because Luco codes, and he's just said in the chat. Actually, said I should go to Portland donuts. Let's go to Portland so I can have voodoo donuts. Mm -hmm. So whenever I will roll into Portland at some point just to get the donuts. Like fly in, mm -hmm. grab a donut, fly out. Cool. I won't take that personally at all. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> All right, All so right, we've got our done. we've got our donut. So let me run this, and this should give us a a, a donut API at localhost three thousand. So this is in the wrong browser. So let me open it over here, and now we get API donuts. Look at all these donuts. Okay, and we do Ooh. get back a URL, so we'll be able to text a URL nice. of the of the donut. Okay, so that's really Perfect. fun. So and we and it's got types, went, right? So you got you just went like very ASMR. You're like, hello, let's talk a little bit about oh, my donuts bad. today. My bad, because I literally <laughs> turned and started speaking into the mic. My bad. Um, I thought I thought you were just getting really serious. Like it's time to you know late late night donuts, donuts are a very serious thing. <laughs> Important. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the cool thing is, it actually tells you the types as well. So you can see it's like the first one you've got filled, you've got all sorts of interesting stuff here. Yeah. So let's grab one of these by ID. How are we doing that? Uh, somewhere in here, there's going to be an ID. There's a description. There's, do we not have an ID? It definitely said there was an ID, ID. on ah. the like, documentation. Got ah. it. So let's there grab one of these. All right, so we get a single donut back, and this gives us uh, 
yeah, all sorts of things. So we've got the the type and there's categories here. So we'll be able to kind of pull those in. Um, does it give us, did it give us uh, like generics? Types, yes. So here are our available types of donuts. <coughs> so we can even, we could even start by saying like, if we did, I think it was donuts, uh, types and then I could do like filled and I think it filters. Nice. Was that right? I think that was the, the format type equals ice filled. So I did that wrong. It should be type. So this would give us a, a subset or we could do like iced and okay. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So we, we can, we can actually like filter down and, and uh, that'll, that'll be really fun actually. Um, cause the other, Oh, you know what we could do is we could, you could start by choosing from all of the available types and then we could get a subset of what's left after you've chosen your types and filter yeah. down until you've chosen everything. And then it could give you like, I don't know the first, the top three, uh, and mm, then you could choose. Yeah. Okay. So that, that could work. Cool. All right. So I'm, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to, to get started on this, uh, the setup here. So. Ooh. Okay, so to, to write me. that down, uh, first, choose one of the available types. Uh, filter results for remaining types. Repeat until no types left. Uh, choose from top three donuts. Match. Okay. And then we'll text url of selection all right so that that i think is a this seems doable like we can earn this donut uh, absolutely absolutely oh you know what? i'm so disappointed that i didn't go because i won't pass the krispy kreme we should have planned today. it i i totally would have oh. gotten a donut um yes That's some fine. of the donuts do have multiple types so what we'll be doing is is we'll basically be keeping track of which types have been selected and then finding them that match all of the thing because like you can get a you can get a a like a Boston cream would be a custard filled donut with chocolate icing um, or, or things like that. So we'll be able to, you know, or like a filled donut with chocolate icing and sprinkles would be filled, iced and topped. Um, so hopefully by making these selections, we'll end up with a, a subset of donuts that that uh, well, we'll have to be because we'll be filtering the results to see what what types are left. Um, and once we run out of like additional subsets, we'll just choose the top three. Cool. Cool. So I'm I'm ready then to do this, which means I now have no idea how to start with a like a Twilio telephony app. So there's so we're going to first of all do a basic thing and okay. then go and show talk about how complex it can get okay. and then skip to the tool that takes away that complexity. Great. Cool. So, but number one, we need to buy a phone number. Okay. Um, so we should be able to just head over to the console. Yeah. Let me get logged in okay. here. Get this off the screen. No, it's not going to let me do that. Let me do it over here. There's my Twilio. Am I in? I'm in. Okay. So I'm in. Uh, I need a phone number. And my phone number is this one here. Looks like a number. That's how I knew. Do you want to try the beta console that was built on a really, really cool platform? Hell yeah, I do. Up top. <laughs> what? We yes. just we I'm a just launched the beta the beta console, which makes everything look different. It actually makes things easier to find as well. I am I am very excited about this. Um, so, looking looking for where's our our root request here? This one, console.twilio. Look at this, y'all. Twilio is deployed on Netlify now. I'm so excited. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This is really yeah. I'm I'm super pumped and like. How cool is it that you can deploy something this complicated on on like the Jamstack on Netlify? Um, nice. It's, it's very 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 cool. But yeah, 
That's not what we're talking about today. Today, what we're talking about is uh, we want a phone number. So I have a couple things that we've got here. We've got this uh, this polling app, so we could theoretically use that one, but let's let's not. Let's get a new Ooh, number. Oh, you've got some GitHub actions as well. Nice. I do. I set one up with, uh, I think, Brian Douglas. Uh, he and I Ooh. set one up to like text when somebody pushed to a repo, which was which was pretty fun. Um, that makes sense. Let's see, match to the first part of the number. What about a Portland number? Or wait, what's a what's the the original? The five oh three. And we want voice, right? Yep. Any five oh threes? We get a five oh three. Uh yeah. One of these is one of these will work. How about this one? Cool. Okay, so I'm getting my phone number. It's got voice, fax, SMS, MMS. So that's everything that, that a phone number can do, right? Yeah. These okay. are all the different, so different phone numbers, especially in different countries. In the US and the UK, it's not necessarily like so hard, but in, in some countries, there's not necessarily, it's not easy to find a number that like does voice and SMS and fax or mm. does one or the other. So there's different ones. Also, you may not need SMS, so if there's no need to buy a number that has it if you just need calls nice okay so i'm here i'm ready i've got it i've got a i've got cool. a sid um so now what we want to do is we want to configure it. if you scroll down a little bit further you're going to see what we can do we can say that it should accept incoming phone calls and then when a call comes in uh it will make a it will create a post request to a url that we oh, will determine if I. okay so okay. now we can quickly spin up like a node server that will give it some twimmel it's what we call twimmel okay so let's i mean we can just do this with uh with netlify functions right um yeah so let's go uh incoming dot j or let's go incoming call dot js and I'm going to have to deploy this so that it can hit it, right? Yes. Okay. You can either deploy it or you can use a tool called Ngrok. I use Ngrok when I'm developing locally all the time. Um, I mean, Ngrok my... is a tool built by t a Twilion, um, basically to solve this very thing, but it's useful for everything else, right? So if you're working locally and for some reason you need to expose that local host onto the web using ngrok you create a tunnel from okay. a url to your local host um, it's temporary so it's not something you would ever do in production but it's really useful when you're developing locally i like to use it sometimes if i'm working like when i'm doing some like stuff to build something for a friend or a, or a little person outside of work um i send them an ngrok link so they can just see what's on my local host and i don't have to go about deploying their changes every time when it's just like a tiny change gotcha okay so let's go to github learn with jason twilio ivr uh and then i think what i can do is netlify dev live which i think will use ngrok let's find out oh see that's very similar to live twilio tunnel CLI. Si oh i need to i need to actually initialize this first so okay. let's uh let's do this i'm going to get add everything um, and we'll get commit uh, as a work in progress. Uh, Twilio IVR. Okay, and then I'm gonna GitHub repo create, learn with Jason Twilio IVR. I love this GitHub CLI so much. It is so cool. Gonna create that, yes we are. Got it, created git push. Upstream origin mass main. Got it. And then I can Netlify init with the Netlify CLI. And this will create and configure a new site. I'm going to put it on my team. Uh, we'll call this Twilio IVR. Uh, I don't have a build command yet. I don't have a directory to deploy. It auto detected Netlify function, so I'm going to run that. Deploy key this added. This is so smooth. You know okay. what? It's I, even though I've used the Netlify CLI before, like seeing someone who uses it sort of every day, it's I, I guess it's probably the way people maybe feel when they see me using the Twilio CLI. It's just like <laughs> it looks so beautiful, just how easily you could do things and get stuff done. 
Okay, so theoretically speaking, I should be able to Netlify functions incoming call and it responds okay yes we have a running local server that we can use as part of our development flow so i'm going to drop this in here now this isn't going to work because it doesn't return any any uh twimble. how do you twimmel that's how you pronounce it yeah so okay. it's twilio markup language kind of like html but twimble. got it okay so now that i have and that uh what so would be an easy way to test this like is there a hello world kind of default yes so if oh you just God, change the work. status type uh, sorry the, the yeah the type the content type to xml okay so you want to return some xml i'll go content type uh is what is it, application xml i believe so no text slash xml i'm sure i think it's text slash xml Cool. Yeah, I'll, I believe it. Um, and the body we want to do, if you just do, so it needs uh, the opening tag response. So open and close tag response. And then inside that, it needs to have it, like this. Just, yeah, lowercase. just like that. Uh, no, capital at the, for the R. And then let's put a say in there. So say welcome to your phone number or something like that. Okay. So I'm going to save this. It says it successfully reloaded. All right, so now if I call my phone number, theoretically speaking, I need to get my phone hooked into, uh, into here so that we can actually hear it, but I'll put it on speaker so that we can try it. So I'm gonna call my phone number. Uh, so 503 386 0093. I'm gonna call that, put it on speaker and it should. Welcome to your phone number. <laughs> Holy it's crap, easy, that was right? so quite... much easier than I thought it would be. Um, that is outstanding. I'm not kidding. Like, wow. That is wild. Like, we just ran, we just ran a phone number. Okay, I just, I'm just say this out loud because it sounds bonkers in my head. <laughs> we, so we've been doing this now after we stopped screwing around for about 10 minutes. Um, we have purchased a phone number. We set up a, a new website, we set up a serverless function, and we got it set up in such a way that Twilio is, when I call my new phone number that I just bought, it is hitting a serverless function and then responding in language that I wrote with this just basic XML here. Exactly, wow. Precisely. Dang, that is cool. That is, uh, that is cool really, really is cool. This so right now we've kind of written that xml as a string but what you can eventually do is be able, and we'll do this in a second is when you use the node helper library to do it you can then become more dynamic and add a lot more complexity to yeah. that still very very sort of in a very straightforward manner yeah i mean this is yeah i'm like i'm very very happy about this like the whole the whole thing I, it, it feels like a superpower right like when you can do something like this this quickly you just go, it's like, it makes me want to just be like, I am the smartest developer alive. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Please don't clip that chat. You're, uh, they're already doing it. Um, okay. <laughs> Coming soon to a sound effect near you. Oh man. I'll, I'll, please take that so I can turn it into a GIF and I can use that anytime I'm feeling really good about something I've built. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. So I'm guessing what's next is now if we go back to our readme, what did what did we have as our next part of the task? So we've got a number to call. We've got a number Hello. to call. So now we need to ask questions. Um, ask questions, right? So we can get our list of available types, which I'm actually wondering if maybe we can. This runs TS node, which means I'm going to have to. Well, I guess it can it can work locally since the this is local, and I'll figure out how to deploy it later because I don't know how to deploy a node server super easily. Um, I wonder if I could like scrape it and just put it into a JSON file well, or something. I think it is a JSON file. I think when you run npm run build, it just makes a JSON file. It just creates a, yeah, let's, let's open this I and find I out. I think I saw that in the, in the, in the, in the, oops. Yeah. It's, there's a, 
donuts.json file in your projects folder, which should hold everything. Beautiful. Okay. So the part that I don't have is this server is what's doing the, the filtering on the, the data. Yeah. Um, so for now, let's, we'll just try to run it locally. Let's, let's make sure we can do that. Um, I will run, this is run serve, and then let's get one donut and say its name. So we've got, where is our donut? We've got one donut here. We'll get this, uh, the original filled Do I have to put the, the TM in there? I do, you have to put the TM in there, that's wild. Fortunately, I know how to do that. Okay, so then I have a, a, a title. So if cool. we take this, then what I should be able to do in here is um, we can do like a, let's get just... fetch equals require node fetch, and then um, we'll get the donuts will equal await fetch. <laughs> I love how these Carter joins in. It's like, where are the donuts? Like, <laughs> I wonder if you knew what we were building or if you just saw me on the stream and was like, there's donuts somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know because that would be hilarious. Um, so I, this didn't, I didn't bring any donuts today, unfortunately. These So that's cool. So now we got the title, and now we can. Have you already got in back ticks? Yeah, perfect. So now you can say yeah, what the title right? is. Right. So that that should theoretically work. So I need to come over here. I'm going to stop this uh, npm install node fetch so that we've got that available. And then let's run this again. We're going to have to change up our uh, our live port because I I just stopped and restarted the server. So take this one. And we're going to drop this in here. Okay, save that. And assuming this works, I can call this number again. Uh, so we'll go to my recents, call it. Original filled original cream. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. I can't even get my head around how... I was really expecting this to be so hard. I'm not lying. Like I was like, oh, we're going to get 10% ah, of the way through this. Behold my bucket. Indeed. Behold my basket. Uh, we uh, we're in great shape. This is so exciting. I'm I'm so happy right now. OK, so we have uh, we have. Where is our code? Here's our code. So we're able to get our donuts, right? And so now I guess yeah. this is the part where where Right now, all we're doing is we're returning information. We're not doing any kind of interactivity, right? So if I want to, uh, so we can get our donuts, so we can get a list of the available types, which um, I could do something like if we do types, right? That was the, was that the? Yeah, I think it was types. No, it was. Types, that'll give us an array. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so then once we've got our our array of types, um, we can do like we uh, we could see, let's see text would equal like well please okay, choose so, from okay what, what, what do you think should I yeah, do something different that is that is where I was kind of going but the thing is rather than sort of writing out the whole string. I okay. was going to suggest, um, like, if we use the the helper library, what we can do is we can just iterate over that. So we can say, please choose from one of the following options, and then just iterate over the options yeah. and use that to add the next line of what to say. Let's let's do that because I feel like otherwise I'm going to burn a bunch of time, and I want to make sure that we get through this. So uh, let's let's do what's the helper library? Uh, Twilio. That's easy. Okay, so we're going to install Twilio. And then I'll be able to get Twilio, require Twilio. And what am I using out of here? If if you go, so if you go Twilio, and then if you come down one more and you create a messaging response, so const messaging response, I like to put them with capital letters. 
like that response yep um and then it equals twilio dot twimmel dot messaging response yeah okay any arguments so then now what we can do no uh, not yet so what okay. we do now is if you go down to inside your actual um inside your function if we just do const like twimmel which is basically what we need to generate right okay um equals a new message and response cool and then now what we can do is we can go twimmel.say and then that's a uh, twimmel.say it's, it takes an argument which is a string um, and then we just say please choose from one of the following options and then what we can do is we because we have an array right types is an array mm -hmm. we can just go like type stop for each type twimmel.say Oh, that yeah donut type to, and then we can just in there go twimmel dot say um the name of the donut but then we want to say press index plus one because you can't go press zero um so like okay. press index plus one four and then the donut dot type okay all right and now they can say what type they want Okay. And then what we want to do is instead of that, we just go twimmel.toString. Beautiful. Okay. So that just makes it easier when you're generating. Now I can see we've got, um, why is twimmel got a squiggly line under it? Unknown word. Oh, this is my, that's just my, uh, I have a spell checker in oh, okay. here. Okay, fair enough. No How worries. do I make it add ignore word? Go away. I just told you to stop. That's like, what's my... It's my mistake. There we go. There we go. Cool. All right. Okay. So, so then this now... should work, right? Mm hmm Okay. Let's get our uh, our endpoint updated in the in the panel. I'm also just completely blown away by the fact that we are running this live. I'm not gonna lie. This is actually the first time I've ever used uh, Netlify Dev Live. Uh, nice. And I'm, like, usually I just don't need the local server to be available live. So this is a uh, this feels like a little bit of a game changer here. Okay, so now if I run this, I'm going to call the number again. We're sorry. An application error Whoa, has occurred. What went wrong? Goodbye. Drum roll. Okay, so can you go to that URL in your browser? Because what should happen is that should generate the same XML that, that we're kind of expecting. Oh, okay. What have we done wrong? Error. Twimmel.say is not a function. Do you want to Twimmel.say is not a function. Oh, I'm an idiot. See how I said messaging response? It's a voice response. <laughs> you know what? It's like crazy hard to remember that all the messaging should be replaced with voice response. Yeah, that was such a silly mistake. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We all forgive you. Um, let's see. Is that successfully reloaded? But it's not. Do I need to like stop and restart here? I'm gonna stop and restart. Let's let's stop and restart. And then, oh, I think I know what I was doing wrong. I think I'm on an old version. Ah. Um, so let's. Thank you, Vinny. Hey, Go. there we go. Okay, so that's doing what go. we want. So let's get this in here. Oh wait. I need this one. Okay, I'm gonna save. Let's try again. Please choose from one of the following options. Press one for filled, press two for iced, press three for chocolate, press four for glazed. I love it. There was like some feeling. Press three for chocolate. Like he's trying to sell that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you know you can actually change the voices on on um the gathering when you use the other like, Amazon Polly voices, the Polly is it Polly or Polly? Uh, Polly voices. They actually sound sometimes they sound like ridiculous. One thing that I love is you can put accents on them. So I love just like going and putting an Australian accent on everything. <laughs> <laughs> just put the <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious.
All right. So now that we've kind of been able to sort of give these people the options, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually collect some information. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way we do that is with a gather. So what you do is you just write twimmel.gather. Okay. Um, and that's going to take a couple of options. So it actually takes in an object as you could actually just do it like that, but it will take in, let's put an object. Um, and it's going to have an action. Um, although you might be able to read the action. It should be an action. This action. Yeah. Action. And that's going to be a URL. So what's going to happen is when it gathers the information, it's going to make a call to the URL of action, which asks, like, here's the information. What do I want to do with it? And then that URL needs to create Twimmel. Now, what oh. I like to usually do. No. And even if you leave it blank, it just goes back to the URL, sort of the the um the route, as the Americans like to say, or the route that you're already on. Um so I usually like to just go back to the route, but then add parameters into and all the like things that you gather will be included in that request. Okay. So then now I can be like, has the person already made an option? If they have, let's not just repeat the whole first step and, Let's and does go it further and use that does it post um yes okay and so the so it, body would be like is it going to send as as json like that like if i do it or how, how does it yes. come in that's that's that is how it comes in so it should be a json and then you should be able to go so let's console.log that body first and then we should be able to go if certain things are in there, if we already know a little bit about them, so I, if we're can you say? if we want it to loop, then we can just leave this empty. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's do that, and we will have it gather. And I think it's still running. It is. So let's just try that again. Please choose from one of the following options. Press one oh. or filled. Press two for one thing I should press change, for chocolate. Actually. Press four for glazed. Press five for toppings. Press six for other varieties. Press seven for fruit. Press eight for cake. Three for chocolate. And then it should have logged something. It did. Please choose from one oh. of the following options. Press one for filled. At least I think it. That looks like it did what it wanted, right? That looks did I just dox myself? Same. I did. <laughs> oh wait can you scroll down yep there's there the we go. there is the second one and gather if end. we look right at the bottom gather end um did you press an option i did Let's and the see. option that i pressed was or at least i Three, thought i, I did uh, it should be on input so if there's an input oops no, damn no. it. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, hmm. Well, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Let's go right. here. One thing that we should do as well is we should kind of move our says. So right now we have our say first, then our gather. So if a person like presses digits before, like let's say the first one was what they wanted, it's still, they've got to wait till the whole thing plays. But if okay. you move the gather, like a little bit further up and if you change it so that if you go const um gather const uh, gather equals twimmel.gather and then change order up the second to twimmel.says to gather.say so now it's saying that these says live inside our gather so if the person oh, okay like presses a button yeah it should be that's totally fine all right, let's see if that process ended when I close that. Looks like it did. Okay, so let me uh, grab this. I'll throw this in here. Save, and then let's try again, and let's see if we get... Please choose from one of the following options. Press one for filled, press two for iced, press three for chocolate, press four for really? iced. Okay, so that time it did gather, and we should see an input. Please choose from one of the following options. 
So it hits three. Oh, if you see digits, oh, I can see it. I can see it move up, no, left, up, up. There we go. Digits three. Okay. So now I should be able to. So this isn't. Uh, it's not a string. It's uh, query parameters. So I can um, here do QS equals require query string, and then I can uh, QS parse. Okay, and then what I want is the digit, and what else? The should I get like the message or anything? Um, or digits. Digits. Do we? I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that we're missing? I can't think of anything. See, because we, we would, could go on. Well, we'll need um, additional, like some kind of state to let us know what phase we're in, won't we? Yes, we would. So I'm trying to remember. So this is where we start to get really complex. So what a lot of people do is they add extra parameters onto, mm -hmm. onto the request so that Twilio can sort of keep, keep track so that you can keep track of how far the person's gone. And then you get really complex and you end up building a state machine. Mm -hmm. um, and so now this is where I go, like, right after now we're going press down the bridge of like press diminishing three, returns. Press three. Okay, I press three. And it's it's just gonna loop back. Okay, so it's doing it's doing what we expect, um, but we don't currently. So like here, because we only have one step right now, we have uh, like this is we can manage this. Um, but yeah. with two steps, we wouldn't know if we were at step one or step two. So yeah, like you said, this is where I would you know left left unattended. What did I just open? Hello, uh, back here. No, anyone? How did I do this? What have I done? I don't want to know. Help. <laughs> Anyone who knows how what VS Code work want to help me? Wait, have you got like your uncommitted changes? That's why you're looking at the tree. Um, I think if you in the get blame, red, what have I done? Red button. If you click on the. Oh, like, I pushed. Dots, the, yeah, you're you right. Go. I pushed this button. Um, I'd have never seen that button before. That's. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah, no worries. So now this is where to, to basically track state the normal way to, well, the, the developer way to do it. If we wanted to only write code is we'd basically track cookies. So we would send, um, we would create a sort of a session for mm. this and then just keep updating it every time they create an option and we'd slowly be able to fill out that piece of information. So we can say, this right. is the question we asked and this was their answer and use that information later. However, that gets really, really tedious. Um, sure. And also what we've had is we've had like hundreds of customers build state machines and we were just like, you know what, why don't we just do it for people? Mm -hmm. So if you go over to the Twilio console, uh, Twilio console, we're kind of getting away from a bit of code a little okay. bit, just a little bit. Um, and if you go into, there should be an option called studio. So on the left, if you explore products and add studio. Dun, dun, dun. Oh no, beta. Right beta. There we go, there we go. Uh, if you scroll down, you should find studio. Uh, solutions, account security, developer tool studio. Well, uh, so Studio basically is a drag and drop solution that basically allows you to create your tree. So okay. if you create, so we call them flows um, because that's kind of what's going on. You're flowing from one to the other. Okay. Uh, we can start from scratch or we could use something built in. Uh, let's, let's start from scratch. That sounds like fun. So we're going nice. to go next. Perfect. And get rid of that. Incoming Look call. Me. So we're going to use incoming call. So if you go on the right, you see you've got this widget library, and this is basically all the things that we can do. We want to gather input on call. Just drag that over. Uh, if you drag it down underneath and then connect that red dot, there you go. <laughs> 
and voila so if we if you go into that gather input on core options so yeah we can then conf uh, add some configuration that's really interesting how your thing is squashed up i think it's i have a, a smaller screen so i'm like zoomed ah, that way makes sense. so if you go to the config first on the left config there we go uh so you can do a couple of things you can either say a message or play a message so for that say is where we'd want to give it all of those different sort of options what i think we should do for now just to save time because we've already done it mm -hmm. is if we go um what we want to do is actually fill that out with our questions and the way you can actually do that is we can do it in a couple of ways. We could actually write the question out, we could record it. But what I am thinking is we want to be able to go over to our the code that we're writing and just get it, get all of that Twimmel written out already because we've done it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add a different, um, a different widget. So if you hit the small arrow, the small back arrow, that one, and this time scroll down, you should see one that says Twimmel right towards the button um um make http request actually here yep oh sorry add twimmel redirect is what i meant add twimmel redirect okay and is it so, so what I'm, we can do like am yep. i connecting this one instead connecting that and then what you're going to do is you're going to configure that so that points to the url that we've done so far. Got it. Okay, so that's here, here, and then we're gonna go to Netlify, whoops. Functions, incoming call. Post, timeout, all makes sense. Cool. Okay. If we, so now what that's going to do is if you get rid of that one, hit publish uh, right at the top. So oh. after saving, you have to publish and then we need to just quickly go and change our phone number. So maybe you want to open that in another tab. If we go back to our phone number and now point our phone number to this URL, if that makes sense. So if you go to phone numbers here, Yep. Uh, manage. manage, and we've got. Oh, manage. Uh. That's for numbers. Okay, and here's... there you go. Just click number. And I need this number. Oh, you don't? No, no you no, don't. No. If you go back to it. Back to here? Yep. And scroll down to where we changed the URL. Change that for when a call comes in. Good studio flow. Oh, slick. Okay. And then now hit save. Okay. So now your phone's going to go through that state machine. And what we can do is we can let that state machine handle states and we can just go, this is the first question to ask. This is the second question to ask. Okay. And this is how we go through it. And do I do that in transitions? Uh, so yeah, so we can add more things, right? So right now you're re it's already going to work and recreate what we've done before. Okay, let's we can validate. Drum roll and find out if I'm right, if I've made any mistakes. Please choose from one of the following options. Press one for filled, press two for iced, press three for chocolate. Chocolate. Okay, and so that, that did what we expected and it- That did what we expected. Okay, so that's that's better. Uh, we're we're already like we're here. It's working. It's doing what we expect. So then we're so we're getting that first response where I'm I'm pressing two or whatever number, and we're getting the number back. So once we have that, we now need to respond again, and we're gonna do that through what? So the last thing we need to do is we need to go back to our, the code that we have written. And the last thing we need to do is we need to hand. So basically the Twimmel redirects, the reason why it was created is so that you can sort of 
do whatever you want in code. So we could have written together manually, but what I'm thinking would be really smart is if we have the API, just go, okay, here's the options I already know, let's go through them. So what we want to do is right at the end, we want to do a redirect. So we want to basically say hand, like sort of power back to the, um, hold on, I need to pause and like think in my head, are we doing this in the best way? Because I'm thinking we're about to go into like a, a loop and about to dox ourselves if we're constantly hitting gather, sending gather back to the same spot. So I I, I, I feel like I'm sorry, I am apologizing, but I feel like we're going to have to slightly change our sure. approach. And, and the way we're going to do that is we are going to, so we've gone through all of the things that we gather there, we gather there, um, sort of answer and then if we do have their answer what we want to do is return that back to Twimmel Studio uh, if we go back to Twilio Studio and if we change if we hit if we change this Netlify function and add instead if we if we add a new um, a new sort of uh, widget that's what I mean a new widget let's add um, splits based on, and if we put it underneath, when we get the return, perfect. So then now what we can do is maybe we can say we can test the variable digits and we can see what they said and we can do something based on, on that. Okay. Um, if that makes sense. Type select. choice so what we need to do if you just give me one second i'm just trying to remember how to get digits if you want so if you go to netlify function can you type in netlify function the netlify function um ah, should have outputs give me one second do i need to like specify those or anything no, um, because what happens is when it comes back, um, when you when you come back, you should have it just in in there. Okay. Just give me one second. I'm just going to quickly look in the docs because I don't remember everything. But what we want to do is basically we're going to go through the state machine and slowly add things on and on. But you know what? Let's actually just do this a different way. Let's go back and create a new widget. And the widget we're going to use is a gather. I'm going to stop overcomplicating it in my head. The gather, gather and put on call. On call. Yeah. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say in the same message on the right. And then we're going to basically write out those um, options. So we're going to say, Press please, press one for iced, and we need to go through the donut API to just make sure we have all the options. Okay, so we we uh, we won't be able to use the donut API to to do it or to we I can't think in my head right now of an efficient way to do it. Would it quickly? Would it work to? So one of the things that we could do is we could also just create multiple functions. So yeah, we could create multiple functions and just return those. Because so if, if we is... can drop those into the gather as like the action, because um, then we'd be able, we wouldn't have to keep state. We would just kind of jump. Yeah, that's step actually step. a really good way to do it. Okay, let's let's do um, that. So we can do um, like step one, or I guess we'll call this one step two dot js, and then that would be uh, we can get all of this and we'll get the digits, and so we'd be able to drop the digits out of here. Uh, but what we'll be able to do on this one is um, we'll have a digits and then we'll have our types. And so we can do a uh, selected type equals um, I would the be index types minus one. So it's digits minus digits one. Minus one. Okay. And then uh, if We'll like 
console.error so that we can figure out what we did wrong. <laughs> and then uh, if we'll, we'll just assume that's going to work because it should. Uh, so then we've got our, our types. And once we know what our selected type is, then we can uh, make a donuts would be a weight fetch. And that'll be uh, HTTP localhost. What was 3,000 donuts type equals selected type. Cool. And then uh, we will get the response. Do rest.json on that. And then down here, we can get the um, remaining types, which this, honestly, this might end up uh, backfiring on us because what what might end up happening is we can do like a donuts dot uh, what am I looking for if I want to get a unique oh god I'm gonna have to like reduce this aren't I if you want to get a if I want to get a unique set of remaining types I'm probably gonna need to uh, filter so let's do let's do it like this. We're gonna do a new set, I think, um, and then we can do like donuts dot for each donut, and then here we can do a donut dot for each um, or no donut dot type. Other than type, do we have any other? What other information did we have? We don't get a lot. Let me let me use the the network here because this will give us an easier. So for each of these, we get a banner URL, description ID, image, nutritional facts, Reese's, and types. Um, so I think types are the only thing that we're really getting that ah. are going to help us. But what we should be able to do is donut types for each, and then what we can do is uh, call it type and um, then we can say remaining types or actually it'll be if D type does not equal selected type because we want to drop that from the options yeah um, then we can do remaining types dot set D type and this should that makes sense theoretically speaking give us a list Hello. down here of uh, let's, I guess just but what like, happens if like somebody wants like a donut that's only one type? Well, so this is the part that we'd have to figure out, right? Is if uh, mm. if if we only get one type, I don't know. I I don't think this is going to be the best. Like we're probably well, not going to get you to your ideal. Zero. We could always do zero. It's like if you're fine with all these options, press zero. Oh yeah, we could do that actually. So if we if we get to remaining types, um, what this should do is it should give us a list of what our remaining donut types are, and mm -hmm. then maybe what we can do down here is um, that sounds delicious. Do you want to further refine your donut match, uh, and then? We can and you say, can say if yes, press like the number for the type you want. If no, press zero. Yeah. So the last one would be gather. Dot say. If you're happy with your donut type, press zero. Cool. Okay. So th theoretically speaking, this will work. Maybe yeah. Let's, let's go update our phone number and find out. Okay. So well, we I need to the... we need to update this one to send to our second action type. Yeah. Uh, to do that, I need to. You can just give it a um. What's the word? A relative. Just a slash. A relative. That's the word I was looking for. A relative URL. Uh, step two. Okay, so theoretically speaking, then, uh, did I stop and restart this? I did not, but, oh, but we have a new function, so I'm going to do it again. OK. 
Okay, so we've got this one. We're in our console. I'm going to set up our phone is going to go to a webhook again. Netlify functions incoming call. Let's see. I'm going to save that and let's try this again. This is very exciting. Please choose from one of the following options. Press 1 for filled. Press 2 for iced. Press 3 for chocolate. Press 4 for glaze. We are sorry. And no! Oh, sorry, I went wrong. Okay, okay. Do, do we have any logs in your... Let's um, find out. And remaining types dot set. Oh, wait. I just screwed up my... I screwed up my my code. I bet somebody told me that in the chat and I didn't read it. So what I wanted for a set is I wanted to add, not set. What did we, oh, okay. Okay, so in here, I want to add, okay, I think that will do that should do the business. It says it reloaded. Let's try again. Drum roll. Come on, phone. It's just calling. Okay, let's try that again. Please choose from one of the following options. Press you should one be able to just hit Press three. two for iced. Press three. Tell me it sounds delicious. Come on. That sounds delicious. Yes. If you yes. want to further refine your donut match, press iced one for iced. Press filled one for filled. Press oh. glazed one for glazed. What press did I toppings do? one for toppings. <laughs> press cake one for cake. Press oh, cake wait, one, for cake. one for all of them. <laughs> That's, I screwed why up. is it doing that? I did something wrong. <laughs> press cake one for cake. That's I mean, yeah, cake one for cake is really what I'm after. Uh, what have I done wrong here? Remaining types for each. Okay. Can, do we have an index? I think I need Wait. to just turn it back into an array is all. Oh, okay. Um, so this should, that should work. So let's, uh, so let's see if we can get the next step going here. So we're gathering, um, and then our, our next, next step would be to take this to like a, a step three. Step three. Yeah. Okay, so let's take our step three. And with this one, maybe what we can do is we can we can do a query for the, the two types and then um, just return our, our top donut. And then because yeah. we're, we're at about 10 minutes here, so that'll give us uh, that'll give us enough, I think. So let's duplicate this one. Is there just a duplicate button? I thought there was. There's not. Okay, fine. Wait, but you did. Do a duplicate. Oh, it just renamed it. When you yeah. Did. Okay. okay so sense. I have my step two in here, and then in my step, step two needs to point to step three. The gav. Uh, there we go. Okay. So that's pointing to step three. And now in here, we're going to get digits again. We'll have what our digit was. Uh, and this time, we are going to, we're going to get our types. Ooh, but we lost our original selected First type. First type. Hmm. Crap. Is there a way to just like pass that through with here? Like, can we? Oh, I go on. I'm wondering if I can like include it in the query string. Yes, that you seemed... could. Oh, that's what that's what we should have just done from the beginning. We, we yeah, because well. we can basically have a query string with like all of the like inputs that we've ever collected and kind of we, use that. We definitely could have. Oh, wow. What have we what have we learned today? Um, <laughs> so it was selected type. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. And then we'll also get a query string param. Um, so it'll be, uh, selected type or no, what was it? Type. Equals event dot query string parameters. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then here, we're not going to do a, a query for types anymore. Instead, we're going to do a query for donuts. 
that have a type of type yeah a type of uh type and uh then the uh, oh crap we do need the the types again because i gotta ooh. well what we could do if you go back to step two right in that url we we put the selected type right what we mm -hmm. could do is over in step three okay so in step three um we hold on because i need to pull the type out that we yeah. need here okay so let me let me just undo all of what i just did because we're gonna have to look this up again so we've got our types but i do have my parameters um and so then my selected type is going to be digits so we'll do like first type equals types type minus one. Er, hold on. No, we're just passing in the actual actual value there. So that one can stay. And then, so let's rename this one to first type. Rename this one to second type. And then we're going to do first type that makes Second sense. type, and we are uh, we're introducing a problem, which is that if you were to press zero, this wouldn't work. Um, but we are out of time, so we're going to try to get we're going to try to get a donut back. Is really what I'm after here. So then, once we look up donuts, I want to get. Let's just get the first donut, and we can text yeah. that back to the number. Seems like the right cool. thing to do. So um, this way, we can get the donuts dot zero. Um, and then with my donut, I want to, like, my text message should be something like, uh, be like, your dream donut is a donut.title, and then we would, like, donut.url, I think. Let's look at the console log here and make sure that that's the correct thing. URL. Yeah, yeah. So this will take us to the donut. Okay. So theoretically speaking, this would be our message. So instead cool. of sending back more twimmel here, we would actually want to. Um, Do you want to say the message as well? Should we just oh, say yeah, let's, it let's, and text it? Yes. Uh, so let's do twimmel is a voice response. And so we are going to twimmel .say get all message. of this out of here and we'll say twimmel.say message and then we also want to add we will text you this information for posterity mostly because I want to hear what the robo voice does with the word posterity <laughs> um, okay and so then in here we want to send a text message so to send a text message, we're going to need to authenticate our Twilio client. Okay. So you're going to need your account SID and auth token in um, environment variables. So I guess you're okay. going to go to a secret page soon. Yes. So if you go back so here's, to... Sorry, here's, here's what I'll do on this side. I can use a, a dot .env. And so we'll do Twilio... Sid underscore account Sid. If you do Twilio underscore account underscore Sid, um, and then you do Twilio underscore auth underscore token, um, the node helper library will like detect them automatically. Oh, sick. Okay. So then my my account Sid is going to be up here. Uh, yes. Okay. And your of token is also there but it's down there so i'm going to take that. this one and then this one i can copy i'm going to pull this off screen before i click any buttons yeah. and i'm also going to pull this off screen so let me click my auth token that is copied i oh. love that by jacob boulder your choice was super all right super cali fragilistic oh, i can't even get for it <laughs> expandidocious is where is that from? I feel like I've heard that. So, uh, what is that from? Um, it's from uh, the Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, one of yes. those two. Yes. Okay, so we've got our um, 
our end is set up with the the auth token uh so then it it should pick those up automatically you said yep okay so no what you got to do is const client equals twilio because we've brought it already twilio and then just put brackets next to it there you go and now it's oh and it'll pick those up okay um and then if you go client dot messages dot create okay um and it takes in an object it takes in a to a from and a body okay so two is gonna be we need to pull out the number from if you've like this right yeah okay and then the so or wait the and from is, is what i sent right yeah so if you do a from well you don't even need to no no you don't even need to do that you can just do from and to um but we're yeah. we're, we're inverting them right yes yeah that makes sense yeah so that this way when we get when we invert it it'll actually be it'll make sense down here so we're going to go to number from will be from number uh and then message what is it body body i think it's, I think and it's body will just be message do i need anything else nope okay let's try this moment of truth here um we i have to stop and restart to get those uh, uh those tokens to show up so because i added a dot env um netlify smart enough to pick those up for us so i can grab this and then I can go into my Twilio account, phone numbers, manage, active numbers, and I'm going to grab my IVR. I can't wait for you to like do this with the CLI. You're gonna find updated numbers so awesome with the CLI. Okay, so here we're gonna save it. All right, now, moment of truth, what should happen? Assuming that we didn't typo anything, which is a 10,000 foot if, uh, I should be able to choose two types. Please choose from one of the following options. Press one for filled, press two for iced, press three for chocolate. That sounds delicious. Do you want to further refine your donut match? Press one for iced, press two for filled, press. Do the thing. Do it. Come on. Do it. Your dream donut is a recess classic donut. H T T P S W W W. Oh yeah, we put the URL in that message. Oh, but look at it, chat. I got my text message. You got your text. What what what? Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. So this is wonderful. So we screwed up a couple things. One one is that we uh Aha! Behold, my bucket. So what we need to do oh, with bucket. this one is take off the URL and yeah, we'll and instead that put that body. down here. So now we're now we're including the message in the donut URL, but we won't say that in the hmm. um, out loud because that doesn't make any sense. But so this I mean, this is sick. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. We got further than I thought we would uh given yeah. given how um just uh, this is pretty like aggressive stuff right so i'm going to uh make sure that i remember to ignore this dot n file um i'm gonna have to do a lot in here to make sure that we were all set up to not like commit anything that we shouldn't be but uh we're out of time so let's do a quick round of shout outs first of all We've had Jordan with us all day from White Coat Captioning doing live captioning. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jordan, for hanging out with us. That is made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura, all of whom have been here uh, making the show more accessible for more people. It, it helps me out a lot. It makes makes this possible. I, you know, there's no way I'd be able to afford it on my own. So that is uh, that is very, very much appreciated. Uh, we've also got some really good stuff coming up. We've got Shandai coming up later this week to teach us functional react with styled components nice. uh next week we've got ben hong doing a takeover ben hong is going to be the host of learn with jason for all of next week while i go on vacation uh which What's i'm really that? excited about so make sure you come back we've got matt hojo coming and uh hung soon Wen are both going to be here doing uh some really interesting stuff we're going to learn kotlin we've got uh more things that i haven't had time to put on the schedule yet but i'm really excited about it like lots and lots and lots of good stuff coming up so make sure you uh, you do that. Nathaniel, where should somebody go if they want to learn more about you and if they want to learn more about Twilio? 
Want to learn more about me? Find me on online on Twitter at ChatterboxCoder. Also on Twitch at ChatterboxCoder. You can follow me and watch me stream. If you want to find out more about Twilio, head over to Twitch at slash Twilio. We also put, um, put on videos on YouTube, but also you can just go to Twilio.com and check out the awesome stuff we have there. All right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> on that note, and with the stampede to send us off, we're going to call this episode a success. Nathaniel, thank you so, so much for hanging out. Chat, thank stay you tuned. For having me. We're going to go find somebody to raid. We will see you next time.